And so I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining. Um, during this presentation, you are all muted and will remain that way, but you have a QA um, button at your bottom or chat, and you can um, put your questions in there, and Abby at the end will answer your questions. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of information about Abby. I bet the ones that are here are familiar, um, but Abby. Um, has been heavily involved in the numismatic world since she was 10. She's an award-winning exhibitor and has written articles that have appeared in magazines such as Fun Topics and PCGS Young Collectors Corner. She's a hobo nickel carver who travels around to local shows, demonstrating her craft and sharing the hobo story. Um, in 2018, Abby was named ANA's Outstanding Young Numismatist of the Year. And so now, Abby, I'm going to hand it off to you um, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Let me just share my screen here. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So today, um, I'm just going to give you all just like a quick little rundown on YN dollars, the different ways to earn them. Um, I'm kind of just going to go through the list that we have on the ANA website and add a couple that are not on there. Um, I talked to one of the people in the education department, and we kind of talked through some of the things that aren't included on the website just yet that he's getting to, um, but just kind of give you a quick rundown of like what YN dollars are because not all YNs know and it's such a great program and such a great way for you guys to get some really cool coins added to your collection and for you guys to be rewarded for being involved in the hobby. Um, and then I'll just give a little bit of information about the YN auction as well. So that's kind of what we're going to discuss today. So first of all, what are YN dollars? Uh, they're what's pictured here on the screen for you, but they're a way that the ANA rewards YNs for being active and involved members of the numismatic community. So, you know, you earn them for different things like writing articles or attending shows or giving presentations, things like that. And uh, you can use them for uh, monthly online auctions that the ANA does for YNs or for an annual live auction that they do. Um, all YNs who are a member of the ANA get some for their birthday. I think you get like 20 or 25 for your birthday. But a lot of them, I found that a lot of YNs don't really know what they are or that there's ways to earn more and that they can use them to bid in these auctions. So that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it a little bit today. Um, I've written an article for it as well that's in one of the past editions of the Numismatist. But yeah, so they're used for the auctions. Like I said, we have the ANA has auctions every month and they're online for the YNs. You can bid, kind of put in your highest bid and whoever has the highest one wins the lots or you can kind of save them all up. And then every September there is a live auction that they do through YouTube. Uh, and it's really fun. A lot of YNs kind of get together, get involved and participate and have you know their own little bidding wars and things like that. And it's a way to win some really cool coins to add to your collection because these are all the only thing that you could use for these auctions is these YN dollars. So it doesn't matter if you can't afford really expensive coins yet, or you can't really afford some of the things that you like to add to your collection. If they're in the auction, all these dollars that you've earned through being an active member of the numismatic community help you get those coins. So the first way that you can earn YN dollars is through doing school projects on numismatics as you can see, I just have a little quick rundown here. Uh, you get 10 YN dollars if you do a talk at your school, write a paper, or put together an exhibit that's displayed at your school. I always thought that these were really cool ways to earn YN dollars because you can easily work numismatics into a lot of different subjects in school, specifically any of your social studies. So whether it's geography or history or economics, um, even government, you can very easily find a way to kind of uh, take whatever topic you were given and make it about numismatics. It's something that I did a lot of when I was in high school and even now in college, a lot of my school projects are numismatic based. Um, I'm an education major and so I'm constantly talking about how to use coins in the classroom. So it's a really easy way to earn YN dollars because you have to do these projects. You have to write these papers. You have to give these presentations for school anyway. So you might as well make it about something that you find interesting in numismatics and then earn some fun YN dollars for it that then you, you can then use to add to your collection. So that's a really easy way to earn YN dollars that doesn't really um, take up a lot of extra time because you have to do those anyway. 
You can also participate in National Coin Week. So you can give a talk at your school. If you give a talk at your school for National Coin Week, you get the $21. So it's a little bit more than if you give just like a regular talk at your school. Um, you can participate in the ANA National Coin Week project. So they always have a different project for YNs to do during National Coin Week that kind of goes with the theme. So you can do that. If you exhibit at a local public area, like your school, your library, a bank, basically anywhere other people can see your exhibit that's not really numismatic related, um, that you can kind of show them this numismatic exhibit. You can earn some of that way. Or if you win the uh, contest to name the National Coin Week theme, you get uh, YN dollars for that too. And that's always really fun. It's always fun to kind of give ideas for what you think the National Coin Week should be, what the theme should be, um, you know, things that you're passionate about in numismatics. And it's really cool if you get to win because uh, then you, you're you like, I came up with a whole theme. So pretty cool. And then you get to be involved in Coin Week in that way. Uh, you also earn YN dollars for attending or visiting different numismatic locations. So if you go to coin club meetings, whether it's a local coin club meeting or a regional organization meeting, you earn YN dollars for that. Obviously regional clubs and organizations, because those are a little bit bigger, you'll earn a little bit more YN dollars for those. But you know, you always want to try to go to your local coin clubs if you have those. And I know that a lot of coin clubs, even if they don't have if you don't have a coin club near you, a lot of coin clubs do virtual meetings right now. They're still doing virtual meetings because of COVID. Um, and a lot of them found that they were able to get way more uh, participants in their meetings when they did them virtually because they had people from all over, not just their like local area joining. So um, if you look around to different smaller coin clubs in different states, a lot of them are doing virtual meetings and you can attend those if you don't have one that's near you that you can attend in person. But I always recommend attending them in person. Attending your local coin club is super fun because you get to meet local numismatists and you get to meet people you may not have met like before, whether you, you know, at shows or things like that. So you can learn a lot of new things from different people and you find people who have the same collecting interests as you and you might meet some other YNs who are there. So I always really recommend going to a coin club because I think they're just a fantastic place to kind of get together with other numismatists. You can also visit the U.S. Mint locations, um, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, Fed locations, any of those. You can go and once per year, uh, you can submit a request for YN dollars for those locations. Or if you go and visit the National Numismatic Collection at the Smithsonian, which I highly recommend. I've visited it a few times myself and every time. I absolutely love it. That's going to earn you there's a typo on my slide, but it's going to earn you 100 YN dollars, as you can see on, on the picture next to it. And then if you visit the Money Museum, then you get $200, 200 YN dollars. So there's lots of different things. And these are all really great ways to earn YN dollars because you get to go, you either get to go socialize with other numismatists or you get to go to a location where money is being made or get to go see some really cool collections of coins that you may not ever get to see otherwise. So it's really great ways to kind of earn those YN dollars because you get to see some really cool things while you're at it. Um, and then it's not listed on the website, on ANA's website, but if you do virtual tours or visits of any of the locations listed above, so if you do a virtual tour of the Smithsonian or do one of the uh, virtual exhibit tours of the Money Museum, you would get half of the posted YN dollar amount. So if you did a virtual visit to the Money Museum, typically you would get 200 YN dollars for visiting the museum, but if you did a virtual visit, you would get $100. So that's also another great way to kind of explore those exhibits, even if you can't make it to the location, because a lot of places right now have started offering virtual tours or virtual visits and stuff, especially since COVID, because a lot of people, you know, either can't make it, can't travel or locations are closed. So they started providing virtual tours and a lot of places just keep coming out with more and more and lots of different ones and different virtual options. So that's another great way to do it, especially if you can't physically get to those locations because obviously not everyone lives in Colorado or you don't travel to Colorado. So it's kind of hard to make it to the Money Museum, but there's still a way to kind of explore the different exhibits that they have there because they have some really great online tours of those exhibits for you to see.
You can also give educational talks or programs. So you can give them at a lot of different places, you know, your local coin club um, or at like an educational forum at school or like a small local coin show, or if you give a presentation at like a larger coin show. So I personally, I gave a lot of presentations fun shows. So I gave these really big educational forums, um, but you can give them at your local coin club because a lot of coin clubs, if they do like two meetings a month, especially one meeting is kind of to talk about general club business and to just kind of chat and hang out and kind of socialize as numismatists. But another one is typically to have some sort of presentation. And most coin clubs are going to take presentations from any of their members as long as it's numismatic related. Mine coin club has the most random uh, presentations every month because it's just kind of who decided they wanted to give a presentation and whatever they found interesting. So, you know, one month we'll have a presentation on coins of the Bible and the next month we have presentation on space coins. The month after that it's Hobo Nichols. So it, I mean, you can really give a talk on anything. And as long as it's numismatic related at, you know, your club or um, school or wherever you're giving this presentation, you can earn YM dollars for it. And I think that's another really fun way to earn YN dollars because then you're kind of getting yourself out there. You're kind of saying, hey, this is my area of interest. I want to share this with other people, especially if you have an area of interest that's a little bit more niche that not a lot of collectors uh, find super interesting or know a whole lot about. You know, for me, it was always Hobo Nichols. And a lot of people don't know a whole lot about Hobo Nichols. So I loved sharing that story and kind of talking about where they came from and why we carved them and how they came to be a modern art and things like that. So whatever you find interesting in numismatics, put together a little presentation on it. You know, most of the time there aren't going to be super long, maybe like 30, 45 minutes at most. Um, Cause you, you know, you don't really want to bore people and you don't want people sitting there for really long extended periods of time because it's not a class it's just a presentation so it's not a whole lot of work and it doesn't take a ridiculous amount of effort to put it together and a lot of times you can use these presentations again for like a school presentation you know if you have to put together some sort of history presentation make it numismatic related give it at your school and then give it at your local coin club or even at a bigger you know numismatic event wherever you can find to do that but it's just another great way to kind of earn some YN dollars and, you know, get yourself out there and share your interests with other collectors, which I've always enjoyed. You can also serve as an officer at either your local club or a regional club. This is a little bit harder as a YN, but there are a lot of organizations out there that would absolutely love, especially like young or uh, local clubs, a lot of local clubs really like having younger people really involved because they want to get more young people involved. You know, they obviously want more young people collecting and involved in the hobby as a whole. And so they think that a great way to do that is having, you know, a YN on the board, helping them make decisions and kind of giving them some advice on how to get young people interested in coming to club. So, you know, trying to join the board of your local coin club is always a great idea because then you can kind of help guide them towards growth in that area because a lot of people you know a lot of local clubs are not super familiar with different types of technology you know when COVID hit zoom was really hard for a lot of clubs because they didn't really have anyone who knew how to use it whereas if they had a YN on on their board, or even just a YN member who was willing to be involved and help with that, they could have, you know, helped them through that and helped show them how to use this technology and things like that. But a lot of board members of these clubs aren't super familiar with that. And they don't necessarily know how to get kids involved or excited about collecting. And they're, you know, they just don't really know what to do there. And they're just really stumped. So they really like having the opinion of younger collectors who come in and help them and are like, I think this would be a great idea to get kids involved. You know, maybe if we started a YN club that met for 15 minutes before our regular club meetings, that would get more kids interested because then these meetings were designed specifically for them, they're geared toward them, things like that. But getting involved and trying to help bring more uh, young people into the hobby is another great way to earn YN dollars because then you're kind of helping further the hobby. Personally, I like to think. 
Um, and then you, a similar thing, you can obtain new members for your local club or for the ANA. Uh, when you do that, when you submit your Y and dollar request, you just have to provide the name of whoever you got to join the club um, and kind of like when you got them to join the club. But getting people to join the ANA, getting people to join your local coin club, you always want more people joining. So try to get all your friends involved. Try to get try to get your family involved or things like that. But get people excited about collecting. You know, we want more collectors. So try to get new members. And then when you get those new members, remember, you can get YN dollars for that. And that's not very hard. That just involves talking to people and being like, hey, I think you should join this really cool organization where you can learn about really cool coins. So that one's always super fun. Uh, you can also publish an article. So there's lots of different places you can publish articles. Obviously, you know, you can do it online, newspapers, magazines, so many places. So you can do it in your local coin club newsletter. I know not all local coin clubs have a newsletter, but most of them have like a monthly email that they send out to their fellow, to everyone involved in the club. And if you write an article for that, you can earn YN dollars. Um, or for a regional club newsletter, if you write a new blog post for the ANA, I don't know if you know, but there is a blog on the ANA's website. They have the ANA blog and you can write blog posts for it. Um, and as long as it's an informative blog post, so you're teaching people about something or, you know, telling people about, you know, th these areas of numismatics you find interesting. It's not just like an opinion piece or you know, today I went to the show kind of deal. As long as it's an informative post, uh, you can get YN dollars for that. Those are usually looked at and the approval, as it says, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. So as long as they decide that what you wrote was worthy of YN dollars, you'll get the YN dollars. Um, in a hobby magazine, uh, so things like Coin World, uh, Win, any of those types of things. If you write for those, you can submit the YN dollar requests. Uh, if you get it in your school newspaper or magazine, again, a lot of times those are things you already have to do for school because I know I used to have some friends who would need extra credit and they could get extra credit for writing articles for their school papers. So if you ever need that extra credit and you get offered extra credit for writing for your school newspaper, write about coins because then you get some YN dollars, which you can then use in the auction to get some cool coins. Um, but, you know, just always kind of bringing coins into your life is a super fun way to do it. And then if you write for your newsletter, which is the ANA's YN newsletter, again, I don't know if you know that exists, but ANA has a, a newsletter just for YNs, um, and you can subscribe to it on their website. And if you write for that specifically, you can earn some YN dollars. And then uh, if you write for the numismatist, if you get published in there, you can earn YN dollars for that too. And it's another really great way to just kind of get your name out there, especially if you want to be, you know, become bigger in the hobby. If you kind of want to start working towards like a career in numismatics, or you just want to be more well-known just in general, writing articles is a great way to do it because people read these magazines. People are going to read your club newsletter, you know, all your club members or, you know, the hobby magazines or the numismatists, people read those. And so if you really want to start kind of getting your name out there, writing an article is a really great way to do that. And then as an added bonus, you can submit a YN dollar request and earn YN dollars for it, which is always super fun. Uh, the thing you just have to remember is the articles have to be at least 440 words if you want to earn YN dollars for it. You can't just write like a 50 word little blog post and call it a day. It has to be an actual good chunk of writing for you to be able to earn the YN dollars for it. Now, there's lots of different like local shows that go on all around the country. Uh, I know a lot of coin clubs put on shows. A lot of the ones here in Florida do, at least. I don't know if they do elsewhere. But in Florida here, a lot of the local clubs put on coin shows. And so if you attend these local coin shows, you earn YN dollars. So always remember when you go to a coin show, you get YN dollars for it. So submit those requests because all you have to do is show up and look at some coins. And that's super easy and you wanna do that anyway. Um, and then if you display an exhibit and then place with that exhibit, you earn YN dollars, obviously different amounts for the different places that you can win. But 
placing an exhibit at local coin shows is always a really good idea if you want to exhibit at bigger shows like ANA or Fun or Baltimore or any of like those big shows where they do competitive exhibits. Placing your exhibit at a local show is a really great place to start and get feedback because a lot of local shows, they either don't judge the exhibits, they're just there for educational purposes, or they judge, but it's just a little different and it's a little less competitive and less intense. And so it's a great play to practice, excuse me, practice your exhibit and kind of get feedback on it because exhibiting can be very complicated because some people take it very, very seriously and you have to like follow your judging sheets and make sure you hit all the criteria. And it's just, it, it can be very confusing as a first time exhibitor. Um, and there's just a lot of things to learn and kind of understand. And so if you place, if you want to exhibit at these bigger shows, if you want to start exhibiting competitively, starting at your smaller local shows is a really great place to start because then you can get feedback. Because a lot of times people who attend these smaller shows, people who attend your coin club, things like that, they have experience exhibiting because a lot of people are competitive exhibitors or at one point were competitive exhibitors. And so they can give you feedback and you can implement that and then take it to a competitive um, environment. So it's a great way to start that. So if you really, if you are interested in becoming an exhibitor, I really recommend starting at a local coin show. And then again, you get YN dollars for it. So you're practicing for something that you really want to do and something you want to compete and you earn land dollars for that. So it's a win-win situation for you guys. Uh, if you go to regional coin shows, so the slightly bigger shows, again, attending a show, just showing up, you get YN dollars. So always remember, go to a show, look at some cool coins and earn YN dollars so you can then buy cool coins. I always like, I always like the easy ones because you just have to go do something that already is interesting for you and that doesn't take a lot of effort on your part and you get paid to do it. So it's really great, super fun for you guys. Um, and then if you attend a numismatic program, like a lecture or presentation, because a lot of bigger shows do presentations. Uh, they have people who come and present on a variety of topics. Uh, they're usually 30 to 45 minutes, so it's not a huge commitment under your day, but it could be on a topic you find really interesting or something you wanted to learn more about anything like that. But if you attend those programs, you get YN dollars for that as well on top of going to the show. If you attend a scout program or a YN program, you get YN dollars for that. So a lot of shows have YN specific programs. Like at Fun, we do a YN program on Saturday and at a, a shows, they do YN programs and things like that. Because a lot of shows are trying to draw in the kids and they they want to make it more YN friendly. And so they do a program specifically for them. It's geared toward them. It's a usually of topics they'll find interesting. So, you know, attending one of those can be really fun for you and you can get to meet other kids who are interested in collecting, which is always fun because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always looking for more people my age who collect coins, especially when I first got started collecting. I did not know that many people my age who thought coins were cool and I just wanted people to talk to about coins. So meeting other YNs is always a great bonus. Uh, and then if you're a scout, whether you're a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout, you can earn a, either we have a Boy Scout merit badge or there's a Girl Scout money with funny fun with money patch. Um, and if you earn either of those, then you get YN dollars for that too. And usually there's scout programs at these bigger shows where they kind of go through the whole requirements with you and help you complete that to earn your patch. And then again, you can compete and exhibit um, and then, you know, win various places and earn different amounts of YN dollars. But this would be a great place to take the exhibit you practiced at your local show, because here at regional shows, things are going to be a little bit more competitive. Um, there, there's probably going to be more exhibitors and the judges are going to kind of be taking things a little bit more serious and they're going to have like their set criteria and they're going to take their time and look over the exhibit and get feedback and things like that. So this would be a great place to take that exhibit that you practiced at your local coin show and got YN dollars for, bring it here, exhibit, win cool prizes, and then get YN dollars for it all on top of it. So again, another win-win situation for you guys. You get to put together a really cool informational exhibit where you get to teach people something about something that you find interesting within numismatics. Uh, and then, you know, you win cool prizes for it. You know, a lot of places have, whether it's, you know, uh, bullion or 
the actual coins that they give you as places, you win those cool prizes. And then on top of it, you get to make a request for YN dollars. So that always works out for you guys. Now, when you go to an a and convention, there's a lot that you can do and there's a whole lot that you can earn YN dollars for. So again, just by attending, just by showing up and looking at cool coins, maybe buying a coin for your collection, you know, whatever you want to do, but just by showing up, you can earn YN dollars. Easy peasy, piece of cake, submit the YN dollar request, get the YN dollars, win big at the auction. I mean, works out perfect for you guys. Um, but you can also, at a a shows, you can be a page. So if you attend your page orientation and then work as a page, you get YN dollars for that. That's always something I recommend because you also get paid for being a page. You get tips from the dealers um, and it works really well. It, it's super fun and you get to know a lot of dealers and you kind of get to be acquainted with the Boris floor, which is really good because a a shows are huge and very intimidating if you've never been to one of them before. Um, and if you don't fully understand the layout of the show, whereas if you're a page, you have to walk the entire Boris floor over and over again seeing who needs help and, you know, helping people with whatever they need. So you get really acquainted with a board floor really fast. And then when it comes time for you to be like, okay, I'm going to go look and go buy whatever I came here to buy or go see whatever exhibits or whatever uh, dealers I came to see, you get to know exactly where that is because you've been working the floor all day. And then on top of it, you get tips from the dealers, which is always great because you can use those tips to buy more coins not telling you what to do with your money, but I always recommend buying more coins with your tips. And then you can submit the request for YN dollars and use those to buy even more coins. So it's really win, win, win for you guys. Uh, they also have a kid zone for you at the show. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the kid zone and then they do treasure trivia. And if you volunteer and work at the booth or help with treasure trivia, then you get YN dollars for that. For every hour you work, you get 10 YN dollars. And it's a really great way because then, you know, you get to volunteer. So you can also use those volunteer hours for things like school, if you need volunteer hours or whatever else you may be doing that requires volunteer hours. I know there's lots of different things, um, but you can use it for that. You get to do it at a coin show. So you get to be around numismatists. You get to work with some pretty cool people in the kids' zone booth, I will say. Some pretty cool people work there. So you kind of get to hang out with them and get to know them, get to know some of the ANA staff a little bit, maybe. Uh, and then you get the YN dollars for it afterwards. So it's another great way. Then you get to help out at the show a little bit too. And, you know, it it's a good feeling when you get to help be a part of something so big. Because, like I said, the ANA shows are huge. Um, then you can also attend the Young Collector Corner program. So like the other shows, ANA does a YN program. Um, and if you attend that, um, then you get YN dollars. And again, it's a great program. It's geared toward YN. You get to learn some really cool things and you get to meet other kids who might be interested in collecting. So I always recommend attending those programs. You can give a money talk. That's always fun. It's a little intimidating giving a money talk because you there's a lot of like big names in numismatic who give numismatics who give money talks at these shows. Um, and if your topic gets picked, you're up there with them, which is very, very intimidating, but very fun and very cool. Another really great way to get your name out there if you want. Um, but again, this can be a talk that you gave at school and then you kind of added to it a little bit more and then gave that your local coin club and then people really liked it and you really liked the topic so you wanted to add a little bit more you wanted to learn a little bit more um, and so you expanded on it again and then you took it and you gave this presentation at you know your local or regional coin club and then people are still really liking it submit for a money talk and see if you you get picked um, to give a money talk on that topic Again, it's always gonna be random different topics. It just kind of depends on who submitted what idea and kind of what gets picked. But you know, you always have a chance if you wanna give a money talk and it's super fun. Um, and then it's really good, another great way to kind of get your name out there if you kind of wanna be doing that. And you get a lot of YN dollars for it. So again, always recommend that. And then, once again, we're back to exhibiting. <laughs> um, you know, once you've exhibited at your local show and then you took it to a regional show, take it to an ANA show. The judging there is definitely like more intense, but 
it's also super fun and you get to compete with a lot of other exhibitors and you learn a lot too from exhibiting at ANA shows because a lot of the people who exhibit at ANA shows have been exhibiting for years and years. So, you know, kind of while you're placing your exhibit and then afterwards, as you kind of learn who put what exhibits in and you kind of get to talk to them a little bit, they're going to give you a lot of advice and feedback on your exhibit. And they're going to be like, this was a great idea. This I would change and kind of give you advice like that. And they know exactly what they're talking about. So it's going to work really well for you. And you can kind of make those changes and come and compete it again if you didn't quite get the place that you wanted. But again, you get YN dollars just for exhibiting. And then for each place, you get a different amount of YN dollars. And ANA actually has a lot of different awards. So you can get like first, second, or third in both your YN category and adult category. You have to exhibit in both. Um, and you have the potential of placing in both. So you could end up with two first place or first and a second, you know, whatever. But they also have the typical best of show and people's choice, but they also have a best new exhibitor award, which is really cool because, you know, those seasoned exhibitors, the people who have been exhibiting for years that you are competing with that, you know, sometimes you have a hard time beating because they've been exhibiting for years and you are new to this they're not eligible for this award because they're not a new exhibitor. So a lot of times you have a, a chance to win this really cool award that a lot of exhibitors take very seriously. Like it's a highly coveted exhibitor award. So it's a really fun one to try to compete for at ANA shows because there's not always a lot of new exhibitors. Um, so you always have a good shot at that. But again, you place these exhibits, you earn YN dollars and you could win the cool prizes along with it. And then you have like all these titles because you can be like, well, I am a first place ANA exhibitor. I'm a ANA best of show exhibitor. So, you know, again, if you want to be way more involved in this hobby and if you want to, you know, turn it into a career or just it's something you really want to be involved in for a long time in the future, making a name for yourself early never hurts. And this is another great way to kind of do that, to get your name out there and just have fun, learn new things, and try different things within numismatics as well. Because there's so many different ways to get involved and so many different ways to share your specific interests in numismatics. That so, you know, that's part of why I'm kind of going over all the different ways to earn YN dollars. Because maybe exhibiting doesn't sound super fun to you, but you really like public speaking and you like giving talks and things like that. So giving a money talk sounds super fun to you or talking to your local coin club you can earn YN dollars in that way. You know, you don't have to do it one way. There's lots of different ways for you to go about it. Um, and then, so we have a bunch of other things. You can check out a book from the AMA library, um, subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> if you earn a scouting badge outside of a scout program at a show. So if you kind of just did it on your own or like your troop did it together or whatever, you can submit it through here. If you participate in the YN auction, you get YN dollars for that. So after you've spent all of your YN dollars for one year, you can start off your new year great by submitting a request for being in the auction. You don't even have to buy anything in the actual auction. Like even if you don't win any lots, you still get YN dollars for just being there, for signing up and showing up. So Super easy one again. And it's super fun to uh, attend the live YN auctions because you get to talk to other young numismatists from all over the country who obviously are fairly involved in numismatics because they've submitted these YN dollar requests and a lot of them have a lot to work with. Um, because a lot of things go for very high prices at the YN auction. So if you if you are very serious about wanting to participate, I highly recommend doing some of these and getting a lot of YN dollars so that you can participate with everyone else. Um, INA also does diploma programs and correspondence courses that you can find on their website. Uh, if you complete those, so if you pass the final exams, because those have final exams, um, but if you complete those or pass those, then you get YN dollars for that. If you go to summer seminar, once you're old enough to go to summer seminar, you get YN dollars for each class you do. So if you go for both weeks, you can get 500 YN dollars, which is crazy. And then while you're there, you can also go to the money museum, which is 200 YN dollars. So you can earn a lot for going to summer seminar. Um, but summer seminar is 100% a program that I would recommend to anyone who is old enough. So that's another great way to earn YN dollars because you can learn a whole lot, meet a ton 
ton of YNs, so a ton of people your age who collect coins. I meet some pretty big names in the hobby too, so it's it's just like an incredible experience all around. You get to meet a lot of great people. Some of my best friends I met at Summer Seminar. I'm not even kidding. Like some of my absolute favorite people in the world I met through Summer Seminar. Um, and then after all that, after you have this incredible experience, then you get YN dollars for it on top of it. So why wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, it sounds like a great idea to me. And then while you're at summer seminar, there's also mini courses, like mini seminars that happen some of the nights. If you attend one of those, you get $50, uh, 50 YN dollars. And then again, it's not on the website, but I did double check this with one of the education, ANA education staff. Um, if you get, if you attend an e-learning seminar, so if any of you are YNs watching this, you can submit a YN dollar request and get $25 for attending my seminar today. Um, and that's just a limit of four per week. So you can't attend one like every day and get YN dollars for that. You have to, it's a limit of four, four per week. But if you watch one of the e-learning seminars, you get YN dollars for that. Now, a lot of people, because they don't really know how what YN dollars are or how they work, they also don't know how to submit the YN dollar request. So I just spent a lot of time telling you the different ways to earn YN dollars, but now you're probably like, how how do I how does ANA find out that I did these things? How do I tell them I did these things? So I just email them. There's a form for you guys. <laughs> so if you go to the ANA website and then go to the resources tab, you're going to click on Young Numismatists, highlighted with an arrow over here. Um, and then once you get to that page, you're going to scroll down a little bit and click on the YN auction link. And then you'll scroll down a little bit more once you get to that page and it'll have YN dollar request form. And it's going to look like this form here on the right. You're just going to fill it out as directed. And then at the very bottom of this, it lists the various ways you can earn YN dollars. So you kind of choose which category it was in, whether, you know, you attended a show or went to a coin club meeting, watched an e-learning seminar, whatever it might be, you select that and then give them some information about it. So, you know, obviously the more detailed you can be, the better, because then, you know, there's more proof that you did what you did. Uh, and it's like you wrote an article or something. I always attached a copy of mine because, you know, sometimes they like to read it too, uh, but whatever they may choose. You fill out that form, then the people in the ANA education department look at it, approve it, and then they will mail you your YN dollars. So all of your YN dollars are going to be physical dollars. They're going to look like those dollars that you saw in the first slide of my presentation. Um, so you are the only person who knows how many YN dollars you are. ANA does not keep track of how many YN dollars they've sent you. Uh, they don't have like a running total of how many YN dollars each YN has. So when you participate in the auction, specifically the live auction, when you participate in that, you need to be aware of how many YN dollars you have. Because when you buy things, you have to send them back to the ANA. So you send them these physical dollars. And if you accidentally overbid on something, then it's just kind of a whole thing. And then, you know, you spent all this money that you didn't actually have on and a lot you couldn't actually afford when you could have gotten something later on. So it's just something you want to be aware of when you submit these YN dollar requests and you get sent the physical dollars, you are then in charge of understanding how many you have and, you know, you are in charge of making sure that that gets back to ANA when you buy these lots. So then I just wanted, those are kind of like just the basic information about YN dollars, kind of what they are, how to earn them, and then how to submit those requests. Um, but I also wanted to give a little bit of advice on how to best participate in the YN auction, because especially if you've never done it before, if you have not participated in a live auction with ANA, if you haven't done their September YouTube auction, it can be very intimidating. And it, there's a lot going on. There's, because you know, a lot comes up and everyone starts screaming out the bids in the chat. And all of a sudden you're like, I'm totally lost. I don't know what's going on. And then you're overbidding for things and you just end up doing things you don't want to do because it's just a super overwhelming experience. If you have never done it before, if you've never experienced an auction before or whatnot. So when you do these live YN auctions, they're going to kind of show the lot because they release an auction catalog a month or so before the YN auction, and then you register online. You usually send an email to one of the ANA staff, and you're going to register online with, you know, whatever your YouTube username is. 
And so then you can participate in this auction when it happens in September. So you get to see the lots all ahead of time. There's usually about 100 lots. You get to see them ahead of time, kind of decide what you want to bid on, see what you're interested in. Um, and then during the auction, they'll be like, okay, here's lot number one. And then in the chat, everyone just starts doing their bids. And you have ANA staff members who are monitoring the chat and kind of seeing who is going to, who has the highest bid. And anytime a new high bid comes in, they let you know. And so it's kind of like, you know, it's like a real option in that sense. You know, you're all bidding against each other in real time. So it can get very overwhelming. And a lot of times, you know, you just get very lost. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you are ready and you know what to expect. So my advice has always been decide what you want to get decide what you want to bid on beforehand and set limits. And that's kind of what my friend said. I asked some of my friends who are very experienced in the YN auction. Um, a couple of these guys and I actually had some very serious and very heated bidding wars against each other um, multiple times during multiple auctions, but because we were all very involved. So we had a lot of money to spend too. And we, we would go up like all the way to our highest dollar limit and go head to head until one of us ran out of money. So we have a lot of experience. So I asked a couple of them, I was like, what would be your advice to people who've never been in the auction before? Like, what is your top advice? And so my friend Kellen said, you know, you wanna set limits for yourself when deciding how much to bid. As I've been saying, too often it's easy to get caught up in a bidding war early on and that can impact your ability to get other lots that you really want. So you wanna have a top boundary. So take the time before you start out with the auction and look through the catalog and kind of write down, okay, these are the lots I want. I want lot number one, five, and 43. This is what each one is. This is what I'm willing to spend on it. You know, I had this many YN dollars. This is what it is. This is what I'm willing to spend on it. And for me, I always had two amounts that I was willing to spend. So for lot number one, I would only have one amount that I was willing to spend. I'd be like, I'm only willing to go up you know, to this many YN dollars because I want to make sure I have enough to spend on later lots. If I didn't win lot, the first lot I bid on, my amount, my top amount for my second lot would go up. And then if I didn't win that one, my top amount for my last lot would go up as well. So that's kind of how I would do it. I know people who had just a set amount for each lot and that's what they stuck to and they just kept their YN dollars for, you know, future auctions. If they didn't get what they want, it just kind of depends on how you want to play the game. If you want to spend all of your YN dollars on one auction and then rebuild that stash during the year, it's kind of up to you. And then my friend Garrett said, look at the catalog before the auction and mark down what lots you're interested in. Um, it gives you a better chance of getting the items you want and will prevent you from getting caught up in auction fever, which I think is a trap a lot of first time auction participants fall into is it gets toward the end of the auction and there was only a handful of things that they were interested in and they didn't win any of them. But then, you know, you kind of get to the last slots, which are usually grab bags and all of a sudden everyone wants them. And whether you actually want it or not, you want to be able to say, oh, I did, or I actually won something in the YN auction. So suddenly you find yourself spending all your YN dollars on something you didn't actually care about. <laughs> so just make sure you're looking at the catalog ahead of time and doing your prep and writing down what you're interested in and what you're willing to spend on those. Uh, Cause otherwise you could spend too much on one lot and not have enough for the rest of them. Or you could end up with lots you don't actually want. You wanna make sure you're bidding on the right lots too. We see a lot of times YNs get confused about which number we're on and then they do a huge bid and then realize it was for the wrong thing. You don't wanna be that person. So make sure you're paying attention, you're following along, you see which lots you're on. Always pay attention to the chat. The chat's always gonna have the most up-to-date, like this is the lot that we are on, this is what we've moved on to. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to that, knowing the coins you want and knowing your limits. So that is the end of my presentation, just a little bit about the YN auction, YN dollars and kind of how that all works. Thank you, Abby. That's amazing. Um, if you'll stop sharing your screen, perfect. Yeah. Um, there is one question in the Q&A. It's kind of long, so I'll read it, but you might want to look at it too. Um, are there any collectors of previous YN dollar design issues over the years? Do you want to do it piece, piece by piece? Sure, we can go piece by piece. Okay. Um, I 
personally don't know of anyone, but I know of a lot of people who collect various like a and memorabilia and a history. So I'm sure there's people out there who do collect the various designs over the years. But I also don't, I don't know how often they change. I don't know if you do, Paula, because I think as long as I was a YN, they were pretty much the same exact design. So I don't know how often they change. Um, if Yeah, that's a good question. Enough I for that. that. <laughs> um, like, I don't know if anyone knows that. But. Yeah, I, I can try to find out. But um, the Walt says my collection of these special collectibles goes back to 1987 with one picturing a 16 year old. Cool. Um, now Dr. Scott Roddinghouse autograph. So I, so guess, I guess they do change over the years. I, yeah, maybe they maybe. used to, and they don't as much anymore. Yeah, yeah. I have to ask. I have to ask somebody about that because I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, since I've been here, they've looked the same, but <laughs> hasn't been that long. So, uh, <laughs> secondly, have you, as YN of the Year 2018, been pictured on a YN dollar denomination? I have not. It would be really cool, though. I would love that. that. Would cool. But I have not been. It'd be really cool if every year, like the YN dollars were the previous YN of the year. That's a good idea. That and maybe really that's what they used to do. That seems to be based on your question, Walt. That seems to be what used to be. But it, that's not how it is anymore. Now it's just like it says 20 or 50 or 100 or however many it is. And then it's just a different color. Yeah. So they don't actually have a picture of a person or anything on it. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you so much for the very informative presentation. So true what you said about numis numismatics being able to be worked into school projects. Um, definitely done this in many projects myself. Um, thanks for the great tips. Yeah, Abby, I think your experience has been super helpful for people. And this will um, <laughs> this will go up on our uh, website, but it, it's going to link to the YouTube page because our Perfect. website's a little wonky right now for the e-learning. But <laughs> It's there. It just has to get, you just got to click on it. So, um, okay. Um, if we don't have any other questions, I just want to say thanks again so much, Abby, for doing this. Of course. Thank you um, for having me. And thanks for attending, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. And just keep an eye out. And now that you know you can earn YN dollars for being yeah, on the you can earn YN dollars for so many things. Yeah. So keep an Attend eye out. more e learning. That's Easy right. Way. You can earn them right from your living room watching an e learning presentation. So easy. I always like the ones you don't have to do a lot for. That's right. That's right. Perfect. Okay. Well, thanks, Abby. I hope you have a great evening. And thanks, everybody, for joining us.